All right, example, sorry, I didn't have it open there. Example three in 2.3 um, is really just, again, solving another radical. And, and this is why I think students like this section of chapter two, um, because when we're doing this, it is very, very consistently like what we've done in Math 20, which is a, a really big benefit of how the 20-1 curriculum works. So it wants us to solve this equation graphically and then express our answer or answers. I know it doesn't say that, but it should, um, to the nearest 10th. Um, the way that we're going to do that is I'm going to make the left-hand side y1 and the right-hand side y2. Now, I've already done that just to, to make sure that it worked. Um, so make sure you take a look at that. Uh, you don't have to close that bracket after the radical. It's just a good habit to get into. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in Zoom Standard. Right now, you don't have to start in Zoom Standard, but I think it's your best bet because it typically is where the solutions are going to lie. And we can see that that red line intersects the blue line in what looks to be one and, and two different points. Now, I'd like to make sure that it intersects there. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to make my Y max a little bit bigger um, and I, a little bit bigger. I'll make it 15. And that's arbitrary. Maybe 12 would work, maybe 20. It doesn't matter. The point of these graphing calculators is we can make small changes like that and, and not have to sit for 30 minutes while the calculator, you know, regraphs. I mean, it does take a minute, but that's okay. All right. In order to find those two solutions, what we're going to do is use our intersect ability. So that second trace intersect. Um, for intersect, what I do is I put my cursor on the intersection I'm looking to find, and then I hit enter three times. Important things to notice is that your calculator will automatically switch the curve that it's on. Right now, I'm on the blue curve. When I hit enter, it switches to the red curve, and then the guess should be near the intersection you're finding. And I get my first solution is 5.807866, and that's a lot of different numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that on my home screen by quitting out of my graph and then just typing an X, because at least now we have that and we can see it. All right, there is another intersection, though. So I have to go back to second trace number five. Um, and then what I'm going to do, and this is a little bit weird, I know, but I can do first curve and second curve over here. But when I do my guess, to make sure that my calculator finds the other intersection, I have to put my guess closer to that intersection. I'm going to put it right on top of it. Um, and I get my other solution is negative 1.80788, blah, 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 blah. Now, again, what I'm going to do is just so I can, you know, take these over to the smart board file, I'm going to put that X in there as well. And then just cheating a little bit here, I am just going to take those values and we're going to put them into the smart board file and finish the question. So using our graphical technique, which is just to graph the left-hand side and the right-hand side, um, there's, they've used a different technique there. Sorry, let me get rid of that. Um, <clears throat> what we can do now is with those two solutions, because it says express our answers to the nearest 10th, I don't know why I revealed that. I'm just going to erase it there. Um, all we have to do then is, is use a little bit of rounding. So we got two solutions, 5.8 and negative 1.8. Now, we have talked about this in other courses, but because we are rounding, this is why exact value is so beneficial, there is no expectation that this is going to work perfectly, right? But because we're rounding to the nearest 10th, they should be accurate to the nearest 10th as well. So the two things that we're gonna verify are those two values of X in the original equation. So I'm going to check if the square root of three times 5.8 squared, remember we're rounding to the nearest 10th, minus five, is equal to 5.8 plus 4. Right-hand side, hopefully we don't need a calculator for it. That's 9.8. Um, the left-hand side, I'm going to do it in two steps. I will give you what the radicand is just to make sure that we're not typing it in wrong in our calculator or anything. And I get 95.92 is inside that radical. And when I take the square root of it, I get 9.793875. And I'll put the ellipsis there at that point. And I'm saying that that's equal to 9.8. Now, I fully appreciate that 9.793875 is not 9.8. But if I round to the nearest tenth like the question told us to do, I do get a proper verification. Right? That's true. 9.8 is 9.8. All right, uh, we got two answers. So we have to do two verifications. I'm going to see if I can sneak it in right here. I'm going to check if the square root of 3 times negative 1.8 squared minus 5 is equal to negative 1.8 plus 4. Negative 1.8 plus 4 ends up being 2.2. .2. When I do the same step that I did on the other side, really importantly that when you're squaring that negative 1.8, I know that I've told you this before, but I just want to show you quickly, when you type it in, make sure you put that negative 1.8 in a bracket and then subtract 5. If you're not doing that, it's very likely you're going to input or your calculator is going to do something wrong. So the radicand ended up being 4.72. And when I take the square root of 4.72, 
what I get is 2.17255 and all sorts of stuff after that is equal to 2.2. But if I round to the nearest tenth, I get that 2.2 is equal to 2.2, which is a correct verification. Now, it's worth mentioning that, you know, on the diploma, there's a lot of multiple choice. If a multiple choice question asks you to solve something graphically, this should be the technique that you use. Right? There is nothing wrong with this technique. Being able to use technology in conjunction with some of the math theory that we learned throughout the years is very, very important. Um, and solving with your calculator is not some evil concept, but if you're only solving with your calculator, you're never going to you know, uh, build those algebra skills and get better at some of the stuff that we really need for calculus and beyond.